can't wait. Go ahead and throw me, George. <laughs> anyway, like I say, they were sitting just in front of me. They weren't young exactly, and they weren't really she old. She was about Sir. my age, you said, and not yes. more. Maybe she was when you started telling this story, but not now. Anyway, she was calling him Papa. He was calling him. Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jimmy Malcolm. It's time for the killing. I know that sounds a lot more violent than it should. Uh, this is the 1959 film by Stanley Kubrick, uh, one of the greatest directors of all time, filmmaker even. Uh, I know Tarantino loves this movie. This is I love Tarantino. I'm going to watch this movie. Let's get to it. Nevertheless, he had a $5 win bet on every horse in the fifth race. He knew, of course, that this rather unique system of betting would more than likely result in a loss. But he yeah. didn't care. In the final I'll win. Next to the final I'll place. Quite a crowd you got. Yeah. That was smooth. I love the way old movies are shot. Only the addition of the missing fragments of the puzzle would reveal whether the picture was as he guessed it. Where to open? I'm so confused, but I feel like I'm supposed to be confused. Or at least I'm really hoping so. I ain't got it, Leo. I know I should have it, and I'm as anxious to pay off as you are to have me, but I just ain't got it. I doubt well, that sincerely. Since you relieved me of the unpleasant necessity. It's a deal, then. I pay you the 2600 within the next two weeks. Plus $400, a total of 3000 The extra interest. I'll take care of myself, mister. That's my specialty. I love a good crime movie. They got their problems, and they've all got a little larceny in them. Take a chat. Five years you've been away. I, I know they must have been terrible for you. I mean, being locked up must be a, a terrible thing. They had a picnic. I'm no good for anybody else. I'm not pretty, and I'm not very smart, so please don't leave me alone anymore. Uh, nothing is going to happen. Not this time. I don't want to say goodbye. Oh, hello, Mar. We were just talking about you. Hi, Johnny. Couldn't knock, Hi, motherfucker. Okay. Take care of Johnny. Oh, there's nothing I wouldn't do for Johnny. I'll see you. A half an hour earlier, at approximately 6.30, Mike O'Reilly... the have to keep track of. Hello. I love how that everybody's got the same shot, that left to right strafe. Fix me a drink, George. I think I'm developing some pains myself. Sherry, can't I ever say anything at all without you joking me about it? Uh, hurry up with that drink, George. The pains are getting worse. This... She's hot. She ain't that hot, sir. Get rid of her. Kind of sweet. Candy bar, George? No, not a candy bar, don't it? <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, they weren't young exactly. I guess the woman was about your age. A little senile, you mean, with one foot and a big toe in the grave? <laughs> you want to hear this or not? Do you or not, Sherry? I can't wait. Go ahead and throw me, George. <laughs> anyway, like I say, they were sitting just in front of me, and I could hear what they were saying. Well, part of it. They weren't young, exactly, and they weren't really she old. She was about Sir. my age, you said. And not yes. Anymore. Maybe she was when you started telling this story, but not now. Anyway, she was calling him Papa, and he was calling her Mama. And they have steak and asparagus and potatoes. I don't smell nothing. Well, that figures, because you're too far away from it. Too far away from well, it? Certainly, you don't think I had it all cooked, do you? It's all down the shopping center. I seem to recall you made a memorable statement too Something about hitting it rich And having an apartment on Park Avenue And a different car for every day of the week mm. Not that I really care about such things and Right I'm gonna have it, Sherry Hundreds of thousands, maybe a half a million <laughs> Get rid of her Of course you are, darling I'll Did spit you it on her address on the envelope When you send it to the North Pole? <laughs> You've never been a liar, George You don't have enough imagination to lie what makes you think or know that you're going to have... I can't talk about it, Sherry. I just can't. How'd you bring it up? Please go right ahead, George. If you want to act that way, I certainly won't try to stop you. Sherry, now, Sherry, honey, don't be sore. Well, after all, one woman... Right of you got to say a thing like that. You know I'm crazy about you. Clearly. Definitely. You wouldn't do anything foolish, would you? I certainly wouldn't want to, but as long as you don't trust me or have the slightest bit of faith in me... Oh, this was just the worst. Sherry is the worst. And she was easily the best part of this movie so far. 
Her dialogue is fantastic. Jesus. Fantastic. Ugh. Ugh. Not my baby? Val, I called you last night. Oh, yeah? There was no answer. Mm. Mm. I stepped out. I called you four times. God damn. Don't make it sound so ominous. It's not like you're gonna eat me alive. I made you do that. Made me sad, but Petey's an idiot. We're gonna have money, Val. More money than you ever dreamed of. Maybe even millions. Oh, yeah? How? George, that's how. Oh, uh, George. He stumbled called onto Petey. something big. And you can believe him, Val, because George may be a fool, but he's not a liar. You are, though. You think, uh, let's say, George and his boys pull his job and George gets his cut? Maybe I could take it away from him, huh? I think you could. What the fuck? That's so awful. You know, if this is true, this is a lot bigger than you think. You're mm. interested in taking George? Not a chance. I could see he was scared stiff because he talked as much as he did. I thank God he didn't. <sighs> Add or subtract the slightest change, even if it's something as small as the placing of a hot dog stand. Now, give or take a few thousand, I figure the loot on this deal at two million. Jesus, go ahead. Armored car arrives, a uh, stick-up is, is out of the question. This is a random question. Is he, um, McCluskey from, uh, Godfather? Part one? He looks familiar. Don't raise it! Not saying you all look alike. Just asking a question. He loves his left, right strafe. In and out of rooms. What a baby doing outside the door. Ooh. You guys, any of you ever see this woman before? It's Sherry, my wife. Why, you, you've been talking. I just spilled to her. I didn't ask. What, do you think I'm crazy? I wouldn't jerk you, clown. Come on, clown. Why would I do a thing like that, Johnny? I'm sure she wouldn't. She's just a building inspector, isn't she? Just stopped outside that door and I measure that keyhole. Why, you... Let's have it, George. We're gonna get it out of one of you. Seriously. Take him home to his apartment and stick with him until I phone you. No, I'm not leaving Sherry. You leaving her, right? Now, how are you going? Slide no walk. <laughs> this is so good. This is so much fun. I gotta be honest, the only thing I don't like about movies from this time period that kind of stick out like a sore thumb outside of black and white is the soundtrack. Everything else I find to be superior to today. Dialogue, cinematography. Right, oh, sister. Jesus. Yes, wasn't that naughty of me, but I'm afraid I was. I found an address in George's pocket. I thought he might be playing around with another woman, so I came over. Well played. You like money. You got a great big dollar sign there where most women have a heart. So play it smart. Stay in. You don't know me very well, Johnny. I wouldn't think of letting George throw his money away on cigars. <laughs> very big issue. Sure, he's hilarious. Yeah. I wouldn't like that. And frail as I am, I'd much prefer to be loaded. Well, I think we understand each other. No, beat it. <laughs> Those guys, fine frenzy. They've offended me plenty. Oh, George, don't be such an old bear. Seriously. Yeah, but I'm not going to forget it in a hurry. Well, what else could they have done? I thought they acted quite reasonably. Agreed. Everything's all right with you and your pals now. You're going to have lots and lots of money. And... I've been thinking it over, Sherry. Well, I can hardly wait. How soon will it be, George? What day? It ain't going to be, Sherry. I'm dropping out. What? How disappointed I'd be if you didn't get that money. I'm afraid I'd feel like you didn't really love me. I... This bitch. Now that you have a chance to do something and to... All those things you promised, buy me things. <laughs> well, what are you going to do, George? You know, there ain't a thing in the world I wouldn't do for you. Uh, then you'll do this for me, won't you? She's great. She's uh, horrific, but she's great at being horrific. You really love me, Sherry? Oh. Of course. You'll always love me? Always and always. For bastard. Life is like a glass of tea, huh? Oh, Jenny, my friend. You never were very bright, but I love you anyway. God damn. Huh? Enterprise instead. No, no. It's not mine to share up. Very well, Jenny. Now a sense that will be shared. And I'll buy a cup of coffee. He went for it. If you gotta go for it, go for it. All right. There's a parking lot less than 300 feet from the northwest corner of the track. That's adorable. Parked and suppose by accident you do get picked up. What are you done? 
You shot a horse. It isn't first-degree murder. In fact, it isn't even murder. In fact, I don't know what it is. But the chances are the best they could get you on would be... Uh, Absolutely. Riot ...or shooting horses out of season or something like that. Right. Well, you put it down. Could you make it sound real simple? You know, cops... <laughs> shooting horses out of season. Horse. And Nicky, 5,000 bucks is a lot of dough, and that's what I'm paying it for. So nobody has to know my business. All right, John. I got no troubles with you. I'm with, I'm with you. This is awesome. Tarantino said, um... That Reservoir Dogs was his, the killing. I can see that. It feels kind of like learning to perfect your craft with a fantastic crime movie. Gosh, honey, did I wake you up? I'm sorry. I, I just couldn't right. sleep somehow. Can I get you anything? Would you like some more coffee? No, I guess not. Look at how pleasant she's being. Oh, sure, you sure you feel all right? I'm sorry, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. I deserved it. I know I've been irritable mood to have. But things are going to be different, you'll see. We get all that money and have so many nice things. I'll stop thinking about myself so much. Your problems will be my problems. Whenever you're worried about something, naturally you'd be a little upset at a time like this. Today, isn't it? Huh? What makes you think that? Just because I'm... You're I'm nervous, nervous, stupid. Maybe he had reason to. He wanted to make you understand that he means business. All I've got to say is you've certainly changed your tune since he and his friend slapped you around. Damn. I was going to tell you something about your dear friend Johnny, but since you feel about him like you do, take his word against mine. What about him? What were worst. you going to tell me? He was so upset, and every time I tried to say anything, you cut me off. Sherry, what are you trying to tell me? I tried to stop him. I pleaded and I struggled. Oh, my God. This bitch is the worst. It doesn't matter, does it, darling? The only thing that really matters is how I feel about you now, isn't it? Holy shit. She's the worst. All-time movie villain. It's only been 45 minutes. If that. Wouldn't it be great if we could just go away, the two of us, and let the old world take a couple of turns and... You better go back to sleep. Hey, um... Seven Aww. About it's pretty heavy for 1959. First at a florist, he arrived at the motel at 8.15. He was on schedule. Sherry is the worst person ever. Things are going to get much better for us. I know. I know, dear. I know I've made a lot of promises in the past, but this time it's not just talk. We're going to be rich and soon. Jesus. You're going to have a fine house and doctors that'll make you well again. Of course, dear, but you'd better go along, Mike. Will you She's adorable. Yeah. Just going to agree to whatever he says. I called mother. She'll be over this afternoon to fix your dinner. Thank you, dear. Goodbye. Don't you tell us to be a scumbag, too. What do you guys get off calling me an old man? You buy your powers after you get through work, Mike. I'll have a little whoop on you before you get home. Well, Fucking George. Help. What's the matter, Mike? I was just trying to do your favor. Those flowers are going in my locker. Then I'll know where they are. Okay, Mike, suit yourself. I'm Jesus. sorry, Bella. I appreciate your offer. But after work, you know how it is. Everybody will be in a hurry to get away and... <laughs> you, you were rather rude, sir. But, hey, you do what you gotta do. By the way, when's the big day supposed to be? <laughs> well, don't worry about it. The sixth one is always the hottest. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a minute. <laughs> That's hilarious. God damn it. Officer. Not now. I got things to do today, lady. On half a dozen different occasions, and he knew at just what point he should be at precisely what time. He knew the entire success of the plan depended on his accuracy in arriving at the track at exactly the correct moment. Fair enough. There are many things of this sort, including love and death and my business for today. Please remember to make that call if I'm not back at six ten. That took a lot of work to understand what he said. I got it, but the one hundred thousand dollars added lands down stakes at one mile. He looks like he's fought people about his entire life. What's the matter with you? Oh, Jesus. Oh, who's this cop sucker? God, he's an animal. Maurice. Oh my god. 
fucking animal. Uh, looks like George the Animal Steel. The hairy chest and bald head and the fucking... Though it's significantly before Steel was around. Parking lot, mister. This one ain't open yet. Uh, I don't like the trouble. So you're not trouble. So you take down that fence, I'd like to get settled down before the first race starts. Okay? Sure, mister. That was what horribly wrong. She's just about the song we're about. Besides being black in 1959. <laughs> That's not funny. You say you're betting on him, huh? Yeah. I got a little bet down on him. Well, I guess I better be getting back to work. Yes, beat it. If you think of anything, I'll give you a yell. Oh, brother. I mean, his brother here just to die. He's nosy. It was mean half a second ago. Found out he's paraplegic in the war. Fair enough. That is something to fucking bond over. I mean, he was told. I'm sure he wasn't. You get the point. Um, now he's all chatty. Beat it. I'm trying to murder a horse here, if you don't mind. It's a nice day, ain't it? Yeah. Yes, sir. I didn't figure it would be when I first got up this what morning, but it turned fuck? out to be fine. I brought you some luck, mister. You bet in this race, I figure you might need it. Oh, now, you're wrong, I'm Be a nice guy and go on about your business. My mistake. Got him to go away. That's hilarious. Fucking Shelly. I thought he was just fooling around. I didn't know he was really drunk. That uh, him not wanting to go with him really uh, did him in. Fucking Shelly. Professional. Take it over here. All right, turn around and face the wall. And one of them had a gun? It's an easy job, huh? Jockey Danny Freed appears to be unhurt. Your attention, ladies and gentlemen. What's it going to take? We have really up. no exact information. You know, we have a... I'll put the shitty ones in there. I got a whole bunch of stacks up there. Who cares? Not the jockey. I'm joking. I'm glad he's all right. Shame the horse ain't. All right, let's go. That's enough. Bag ain't even that big. Let's go. Now, dumb George is gonna what? Shoot him? This is crazy. Biggest bag of all time, the magical elf bag. Nice. Nice. Very nice. Bulky duffel bag containing the money. A painstaking search of the track grounds is being conducted on the theory that the money may still be hidden there. And now we take you back to our regular. It's not a terrible theory program. either. Anyway, if they do, won't cut any ice. Captain knows I was drunk. And he ain't a man you can argue with. So I guess I'll just have to break. It's a great break. shot. He's supposed to be your seven. I think I hear the elevator. That'll be Johnny. Yeah. How excited everybody is. All right, everybody else. Oh. What is this? It'll be a mess if you don't keep those mitts up. Now, where's Johnny? What time's he do? Hey, where's the jerk? Where's George? The jerk's right. <laughs> How'd they all get shot? That's stretching credulity quite a bit, but it was awesome. Forty minutes before, at 6.25, Shit. Johnny reached the motel. Due to heavy traffic around the track, he was 15 minutes behind schedule. Thank God for him. Should really switch out this bag, shouldn't we? 
money to be divided in safety at a later date. After what he had seen, and not knowing the cause or the circumstances of the others, Johnny had no choice but to save himself and the money. Absolutely. I really hope Johnny gets away with this. If the brain's the aberration, he's competent. You can't save anybody else except stupid George. Why pay George for being an adult? How'd it go, dear? Couldn't even play it smart with a gun pointed at you. <laughs> well, you better, yes, and you better get out of here before he gets here. <laughs> the door's behind you. Take a cab. Holy shit. George is such a bum. And go, you look terrible. <laughs> Bad joke without a punchline. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Shelly got way better than she deserved. Bullet to the stomach. Fuck it. A flight 808 DC 7 service from Chicago. American Airlines. You join the view there, buddy? Jesus. He's the sweetest man, isn't he? We tell we have wheels fast and see daddy come off the airplane. Beat it. Let me talk to your supervisor, huh? I'll be very happy to call him. Mr. Grimes? Mr. Grimes? Come down you this way, please. Think this over? We'll give you a full rebate on your ticket, sir. Wait a minute. I, I don't want a rebate. Well, sir, I, I don't know what else to suggest. Sir, so what are we doing? Lifetime. All right. Check it through. Passengers Thank you, sir. Now I'm sure you'll find the service for your complete Airlines satisfaction. Flight 40, the New Englander, DC 7 service. Aye. Oi. Aye. Oh my god, if it falls in. Oh, this fucking dog. You're going back to prison, sir. <laughs> that hurt. That hurt my goddamn soul. All right. That was The Killing. I must say, I did enjoy that movie. Uh, most of it aged rather well. Music, not so much. Um, and I found the finish to be both disheartening and perfect. As much as I wanted to see Johnny get away with it, because he was so competent. It's the only one that was fucking competent in this movie. <sighs> and competence should be rewarded, no. But unfortunately, bad guys have bad things happen to them. And you get to avoid a bullet. So there's that. Um... That's kind of a... Actually, you know what? I think that's kind of... Not experimental. That's not the word I'm looking for. A ballsy finish. That's a ballsy finish for the movie. Pardon me. I watched The Northman not too long ago. I know I feel like a weird transition. Stay with me. I watched The Northman not too long ago. And in that movie, there is a fantastic villainous female performance. And I immediately, after that particular, one particular scene, about midway, I immediately put her on my favorite movie villains of all time list. Shelly's on it too. Shelly is, first of all, she's horrendous. She's so awful. And she might, no might, she is easily the most entertaining part of this movie. From the moment she appears on screen, the first words out of her face, the entirety of that scene, you know exactly who this woman is. Exactly. Everybody on the planet knows who she is. All of us watching and everybody in the script, um, starting with Johnny, knows exactly who this lady is and what she's about, except George. George is the only adult that doesn't get it. She was so good. I, 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 I can't remember the last time I laughed that hard at just pure dialogue. Like, 
and a lot of scenes is the circumstances funny and the dialogue helps it along like Grand Budapest Hotel like that there's a lot of funny dialogue in there but it's helped by the fact that this is all kind of ridiculous this scene is just her talking it's just her talking <laughs> in the most sarcastic way possible and I laughed and laughed and laughed it's so good it's so good uh, I like the plot. It was simple. It was effective. I can see how uh, Tarantino would go for a movie like this. There was another one he did. Uh, he w- was influenced by Charlie Varick. It's much later in '59. I want to say in the '80s. That also, you, if you like look closely, you can kind of see some of his style develop from there. Anyway, I love this movie. Love is strong. I really like this movie. You know what? That was really good. I think we're going to continue our Kubrick kind of uh, watching next week. Uh, next month, rather. I think that's the move. I think that's the move. Anyway, uh, post your comments down below. Like, share, subscribe.